Hey there everyone, welcome back to another episode of Selenium Express. My name is Avilash and in this episode, we will learn to create a sign-off form. In the last episode, maybe we have discussed about the login form, how do we, uh, how do we create a login form for ourselves and basically customizing our login form and things like that. In this episode, let's talk about the sign-up process and then again, this is going to be a very, very simple, simple thing to do. If you already know Spring MBC, if you have a little bit of idea of Spring JDBC, and if you are familiar with Spring Security, whatever the things that we have discussed previously, very easily we'll be able to build this particular form. Well, if you are someone who have not followed the JDBC series completely, still you can you can continue with this video. I'm sure that you'll be able to understand. But if you have completed the Spring JDBC series, this is gonna be a bonus because I I'll be using Spring JDBC for my persistence layer. So maybe, uh, you know, after we complete Spring Security, uh, we will go for, you know, Hibernate and we'll learn Hibernate and we'll learn to create sign up forms by using Hibernate as our, I mean, in our persist persistence layer. Persistence layer. <laughs> okay, for our persistence layer, we can use any kind of technology, right? If I, if I have a Java object and I want to store it in the database, right? Either I can use Hibernate, I can use Spring JDBC, I can use Spring Data, I can use MyBetis. I have a whole lot of options, right? So I'm gonna use Spring JDBC here because I feel that you guys are comfortable with Spring JDBC because we have already covered Spring JDBC in my course. One thing I want to make it clear, guys, uh, I want to go with the flow, right? I, I have not used Hibernate previously, so I don't want to show you something where I'll be using Hibernate because I am not making these videos for, for any kind of viewers. I'm just making these videos who are following my course. Even five people are following it, I'm making this course for them. So uh, my goal is to make your journey smooth. So I believe that you have completed Spring JDBC in my previous courses. So, you know, I feel it is gonna be easy for you to get it. So that's it, so I'll be using Spring JDBC I'll be using uh, Spring MBC and I'll be using Spring Security, whatever we have discussed so far. I'll be only using those things and it's gonna be a pretty simple episode, guys. If you already have, you know, learned all those previous things, might be, this is gonna be a very, very simple episode for you. Well, so uh, before we complete our basic Spring Security session, this is the second last episode. In the next episode, I'll be talking about the role-based authorization and then we'll go into some in-depth spring security stuff and we'll be start learning spring security in depth so that whenever we will go to spring boot and we will work with spring security whole lot of auto configuration will be made and we'll be able to understand okay this is what spring boot is doing behind the scene because i have already learned it right here right so mm, whole lot of good things are coming off i am surely going to encourage you to you know go with the flow don't jump you know the episodes don't skip the episode watch them all well if you're an experienced guy i'm sure that you know uh, this some something is gonna be slow for you i mean you might feel that okay uh, avilas is taking a little more time to explain this because i don't know who is watching my episode i am treating everyone as beginner so if you are having some kind of experience feel free to skip because you are the person who can judge yourself better like okay i need this thing i don't need these things so based on your priority you start learning the things and skip anything if you want to and if you if you have already known them or if you have already practiced them previously or if you have already gone through some other tutorials or other blogs so feel free to skip it right so not not a problem so let's start building a sign up form today and hope you'll find it exciting. Let's get started. Okay, so let's do a simple task today. Okay, and uh, this will not be much of spring security. It's much of how much you understand so far, okay? It's very, very simple thing. We'll be implementing that. And, uh, okay, let's first understand the scenario, okay? What I'm planning like, you know, let's be some little more familiar with Spring Security. Then obviously, as I said, from next week, we'll be start, uh, you know, the advanced thing. So what is the plan uh, today? Let's do one thing. Uh, right now, this is the project that we have created. Let me try to do a run. Maybe run is. 
uh, run on server. We'll just try to run that and maybe we will be set, we'll be just creating a sign up form and we will be storing the user information in the database. Uh, whatever the database we have created, whatever the tables we have created, we'll go with that. So right now, first of all, let me take this one. And maybe I can go to some incognito window. Command P, enter. And here, let's say hello world. Uh, Asking for a login. Already logged in. Okay, logged out. So can I and can I access Hello World right now? I think I have made that secure. Hello World. Hey, the security is not working or something. MVC issue or is security is not working. Let me try with Safari. Uh, private window. Command V. Enter. What the what? Why is not working? It looks like. Okay, let's do one thing. It's logged out. So can I hit hello world right now? Enter. Did I did anything there yesterday with the security? Maybe uh, where is that? Uh, security config file. Hello. OK, there you go. <laughs> 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 OK, it's, it's my mistake, guys. Sorry for wasting your 10 minutes. So. <laughs> I'll do authenticated because I remember I I think I was just making someone understand and I've changed it because I remember I made it uh, uh, authenticated only. So right now all these three are authenticated. Okay, now let me do control S <laughs> and now it should work. Okay, so fine, it's completed. So. Let me remove all the spaces, control S, and let's see this time. Okay. Let it reload the changes. Kick in the changes, man. Just gonna do it. Yep. Just clicking in. Done. Let's go there. And seriously, this time I'll run away. I don't know how to work. So let me try with uh, the lip. The lip one, two, three. Enter logged in now let's try to access hello world enter okay now hello world spring security rocks log out logged out now i'm going to access hello world surely not going to work yeah there we go it's redirected to redirected i mean redirect to, to you to the login page okay so right now let's do one work uh, we have the login page we have created okay now if, if anyone is sleeping now please get up because now the issue is resolved let's try to get into work we have created our db yesterday and here why there are some mixed password okay okay i, I was explaining your doubts isn't it we can use either big crypt or uh, you know no, it's not like, you know, we, we cannot use mix kind of password right here. But anyhow, these things we have inserted manually. Let's do one work for today. Let's create a sign up form. OK, and in the sign up form, we'll ask the user that, hey, give your username, give your password, maybe confirm password. Then we'll create a user inside this particular table. OK, and for now, inside the authorities table, the roles that we have, Right now we can see Dilip has two roles, admin and user. Karthik has one, Repti has one, Moyur has one, right? Now we'll do one work. The role we will manually enter, okay? Whenever you will be giving a sign up form, you will not ask the user that, hey, give me your role. Otherwise the user will say, no, I am an admin, then you will just make him an admin, right? That never works. Role, if you want to give someone admin role, then obviously you have to do that manually right here inside your database. Or maybe you will ask your DBA that, hey, go ahead and update this Moyu roles to admin, okay? Or Repti role to admin. But when someone is logging in, he or she has to be user only, okay? So we'll see that. So first we'll just taking care of this table. 
So right now, now imagine that whenever we will be inserting, we'll be inserting a new user here. We'll not hard code it. We'll be using JDBC, Spring JDBC or Hibernate or things like that. Maybe Spring JDBC right now to insert a row right here. And uh, we'll be using, we'll be encrypting the password. Whatever the user is giving, maybe we can use a big crypt password encoder or maybe a no password encoder and we'll be encrypting the password and we'll insert the user to here. So now imagine, uh, let me again, let me go back to brackets and let me start typing something there. Maybe command N. Uh, so here, create a sign of form. Okay, so in the sign of form, imagine we'll be having two things, username, okay, and password. Right now, we will not be having any other thing. Username and password will be enough. Okay, username, password, or we can give confirm password, uh, but confirm one we'll introduce later. So let's go with this username and password. So I'll go to Eclipse. I will go to login controller and I'll create a new URL mapping. And this one is going to be for sign up. This is sign up and let's say sign up. Okay, now we are going to return a sign up form. Let's say sign up. Okay, let me stop the server. Okay, and now we'll be creating this sign up form. So I'll copy this name. I will go to source, main, web app, web INF, view, and right here, I'll be creating a new JSP. Okay. So right now I'll be doing with JSP with Spring Boot. We'll be doing with Timelip. Then we'll be doing with Angular. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you are, if anybody has taken the Angular course or from the Angular batch. So now I'll be doing here uh, new JSP. Where is that? New uh, other maybe JSP. Click the JSP file next. Maybe I'll say sign up dot JSP. Finish it. Now we got a sign up form. Now we'll be using Spring MVC form tag. Maybe I can copy the form tag and JSTL core tag from here. Let me close this uh, login. Let me go to sign up. Now in here, I'll be creating a sign up form. Okay, so maybe I can give a uh, H1 tag here and I can say sign up here. Okay, command S. Now let's do one work. First of all, let's check whether the things are working or not, uh, whether everything is in place, then we can start with our development. So run a server, next, finish. Let the server boot up, then we'll continue from there. So everyone, I mean, we are on the same page till now. I mean, you guys are understanding, right? What I'm trying to achieve here, I'm just creating a sign up from. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, okay. yes. Yes, Abhilash. Okay, sign up, enter. Okay, sign of fear. So we, our JSP page is getting returned. So now what I'll do, now let's close everything. Let's start developing, okay? So I'll be, uh, this is my sign up form here. Now, as I said, in my sign up form, I'll be having two fields, maybe uh, username and password, okay? So what I'll be doing here, I'll be, uh, first of all, here in my, uh, maybe I can close a lot of things. I can I can close all these things that I've opened right now. Let me close it, close it, close it. Okay, this is my sign up form. So here I'll be creating two input field. The first one is going to be username and the next one is going to be, uh, let's say password. Or we can give another confirm password, but let's not give that because then again, we need to write some logic. We'll be writing that later. So now username, and let's say password. These are the two fields that I want to create. So to create this field, first of all, what we need, okay? We'll be creating field. So we'll be using form tag, isn't it? So form input, so path. So how can I give the path? What is this and what I need to create? So you guys remember MBC or you forgot already? DTO, sir. Exactly, exactly. DTO I have to create. So let me go here and let me go to new and let me go to class. Let me, I'll create a new DTO here. Let's say sign up DTO. And let me put it inside a package called com.seleniumexpress.dto. 
right? So now this in this video, I'll have how many fields? Let's say three fields I'll, I'll have private int ID, private a string username because I'll have a text box called username. That username data I'll be storing here. And then I can have private string password. Okay, password. And this this one also, I'll be having a text box. So for this, I'll be generating the getter and setter. Let me do that quickly. Source generate getter and setter. Select all, generate all the getter and setter. Maybe I can have another two string. So run is, sorry, source and two string. We'll have one more two string here. Generate, there you go. Now our DTO is ready. So now let's use this DTO to transfer data from our front end to back end. Okay. So right now, anyhow, uh, first of all, let me do one thing. I can drag this to here. Uh, maybe I can drag this to here. And then I'll be drag this to here. Okay. So now the first one is going to be username. So I can write username here. And the path is going to be for username is going to be username. So paste it here. And let me say username. And I'll copy this. Paste it again. And this one I'll make it password. Okay. And we can have one more. Let's say confirm password. Uh, but let's go with that one. Only password only. Let's go with that. Username and password. Okay. Now let me give a break after this. And another break after this. So right now it looks good. Maybe I can move this password to here, this comment. And after this, maybe we can have a sign up button. So maybe I can have input type equal to button or submit and value equal to sign up. Value equal to sign up. Control S. Looks good. So right now I think we are ready, right? Okay, one thing I'm missing right now. This will not work. If I run it, is it going to work or not? So if I'm going to run the server and if I'm going to hit this one, if I'll be hitting this sign up URL, if I do enter, do you think it's going to work? This is a controller. Yeah, Dilip, why it is not going to work? There is no action you mentioned. Okay, okay, let me, let me give an action right now. So where is that uh, sign up form? Okay, there. Now here we have this input and things like this. We have to make it a form. Okay, so we will create a form. So form colon form. Give the model attribute here. Exactly. This is what I wanted to hear. We want to have a model attribute. Maybe I can show you that if any, if you guys are forgetting. But right now I'll do one thing here. Form form. I'll give an action. So action is going to be working whenever we'll be clicking on submit in which URL we want to move. We want to move it to, let's say, let me create another URL. Let's say process sign up. Process sign up and the method, this username, password, sensitive data, we can make it post. All right. So now, now if I am going to, so my question was, you see what is going to happen. Right click, run it, run on server. Let me run this one on server. So then I'll be hitting that URL. Okay, so now it's ready. So if I will be right now, uh, maybe I can take this to a, this, is, this one is what? Sign up, right? Control A, Control C. Go to your Google Chrome, enter it, enter. Now we are getting an error. Okay, what kind of error we are getting here? Anybody can guess it. I'm not going to show the screen. Anybody can guess why we're getting that error? Maybe I can show you the screen. Now you can see that. We have not defined model. Exactly. Model attribute basically. We are not defining model attribute. Now, but here it looks like something different. Uh, okay, now, yeah, there you go. Neither the binding result nor the plain, plain target be named command available in the request attribute. That means Right now, first of all, we'll, as I told you in the model attribute uh, session, maybe you have covered it on YouTube or somewhere. I told you that whenever we'll be creating the controller, what is that controller? Login controller. Now here we are going to sign off form. Okay. So when we are going to sign off form, what we are trying to say here that, hey, go to the sign off form. Now inside the sign off form, what we are doing, 
we are trying to load the data. If any default data is there, we'll be loading that data from username or password. And whenever someone clicks on submit, then again, we will be storing those data with the model. And what is the model? The model is basically the DTO. And I have created the DTO here. What is my DTO? DTO name is sign up DTO. So what I need to do, I need to go to login controller. Whenever I'm doing a sign off, I have to create the model and I have to send it. So I'll be saying model, model, and maybe I can do model dot add attribute and I'll add the attribute. Else I can also do model attribute, right? Uh, okay. I can also do at model attribute and I will give, let's say anything I can, I can say anything here, but I'll say, let's say sign up, uh, let's say sign up DTO or something. Okay, and I'll say sign of DTO, sign of DTO. Okay, now I have created a model for sign of DTO and this sign of DTO is going to be my model attribute. Now this DTO is going with a model and that model will be available inside my view. My view name is sign up. If I'll do control shift R and open that view right here uh, inside this form form, I have to define the model attribute. So I'll write model attribute and I'll do control V sign up DTO control S. Now, if I'll wait till the you know uh, reload triggers, I think this reloading completed. So I can go to the Google Chrome right now and I'll do enter. Now my form is back. This is my sign up form. Now till now, okay. Are we understanding this model attribute concept or not? Don't tell me no right now. <laughs> Guys, you are understanding this? Yes, sir. I'll kill you if you'll say no. <laughs> okay. So, obviously, are you comfortable with this model attribute stuff? Yes, right? Or no? Yes, yes, Abhinash. Thank you. Okay. Anu, don't you dare say no. <laughs> yes, I know it. Okay, okay. And one. Okay, Vinita? Vinita, are you there? I can't say no. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, that's fine. Because this model attribute stuff, I know two, three people, you guys only get confused. And for nothing, you guys get confused. You already know the things, but still you get confused. Anyhow, cool. So right now we got the sign up form. So now I, I have the sign up form here. Now let's do the important thing. So now the important thing is here. Let's say someone is giving a username, let's say Vinita, and password is, let's say Vinita. Okay, password field. Oh, we can change it to password, right? Encrypted form. Let's say form password we can take. Command S, go there, refresh the form. Vinita, let's say Vinita, one, two, three. Now, when she does that, and when she clicks on sign off, now what we will be doing, first of all, let's collect the data, then we will think what, what we'll be doing. So how we'll be collecting the data? Obviously, uh, this model attribute will go to, again, to this uh, process, process sign off page. So right now, whenever we'll be clicking on sign off, we'll be moving to the process sign up page. Now this process sign up right now we have to create. So let me copy this URL. Let me go to controller and we'll be creating one more URL called process sign up. I'll copy this and control V and process sign up control X and I'll paste it here. Okay, there you go. So we got this one. Maybe I can say process sign up and uh, this sign up, I can make it uh, process sign up. Okay, so here I'll do the same thing. The data will be come to sign up DTO and that will be binded. Maybe I can, I don't need this model attribute because I, I'll not be sending anything. So I can just say sign up DTO, sign up DTO. So the data will be paged and will be binded with this sign up DTO. So right now I'll just try to log the sign up DTO. If my data is getting binded, and if I'll be able to log the uh, sign of DTO here, then I'll be trying to store it by encrypting the password inside the database. Then we'll then we'll just think like you know what we what we need to do next. So I have just uh, logging the sign of DTO here. Let me go back right now and uh, let me go with the sign of. Abhilash, it should be post. Oh yeah, it should be post. Perfect because they are only I'm saying post. Post mapping. Uh, yeah, post mapping. Yeah. 
post mapping let me do control s guys you remember there i have written post method so uh, we, i should be creating the handler method for post only right so now again obviously one more thing uh, again we don't need to return sign up right what, so what do you want to do when someone gets uh, gets signed up we can redirect him to the login page is it going to work imagine uh, someone is giving uh, you know signing up right here okay username and password he is giving or she is giving he she clicks on sign up we will create a new user in our database and we will send him to the login page we will redirect him to the login page okay who can help me to write a redirect syntax here i want to redirect him to this uh, url uh, my custom login who can help me to do that return mm -hmm. redirect semicolon mm -hmm. redirect semicolon send the url yeah copy the url command c go there paste it command v command s okay now here also i'm logging the dto let's see what is going to happen so whenever in the sign up form i'll be giving my details and whenever i'll be doing submit uh, first of all it should come to this particular method and this is what we called a post redirect get i explained that one and also videos are there in youtube you can see that what do you mean by post redirect get because it, what if you know if a user clicks refreshing here then number of users will be created inside my database because same url will be submitted again and again so what i am trying to do here once user is doing sign up and here i am trying to you know coming to this particular sign up form here i am just printing the data right now but right after that i'll be writing my saving logic here okay so now as we will be saving the data in this particular method guys remember right if we will not be redirecting then duplicate submission will happen let's say if i will not be redirecting when someone is in here and once he does sign up he clicks on sign up obviously that request will come to here and after that let's say he will be here in this particular url and if he clicks refresh then obviously this particular url will be submitted again and again and as we are writing our saving logic right here this particular code will also will be executed again and again and the data will be posted to our database and will be creating multiple users on the same name which is obviously going to create exceptions for us okay and right now we do not want that once user clicks on sign up once this work has been done we will be redirecting the user to the custom login okay now let's see whether this is working or not maybe i can try with vinita and vinita 1 2 3 enter now see now i move to the custom login page my custom login page but the most important thing is that now let's see whether we are able to capture the data this sign up dto i am printing right so i feel that whatever the things we are we are sending from uh, sign up form whenever we are doing sign up when whatever the things we are putting here whenever we are doing sign up that data should be captured here okay now let's see whether it is happening or not so i can see the console so let me go to the console and there you go vinita and password is this whatever i have typed so now we are able to capture the data okay so before we do anything okay so now we can see the password is visible okay the password is visible now if if this kind of password if will be storing inside your database obviously that will be a security issue right now we will we'll just be writing some saving logic maybe using hibernate my betis data jpa jdbc whatever you want to use we can use those logic right here to save this object inside database but right now the question is if i will not be encoding the password now this dto does have a password right and that password is just looking like this right now i need to encrypt it now if i will be encrypting it i can use a password encoder so so i already got a password encoder yesterday i feel maybe i can i can close all this thing it's not needed right now okay and i can go to my config file where is that right here and here i can okay this is a config file main con, the mbc config is here and here we got the password encoder right so now let's use this password encoder i'll go to the controller make sure this is a bean so this will be there inside the application context we just need to inject it so i'll be going here to the controller maybe here i'll be creating a password encoder so password encoder 
password. Uh, let's say, let me type it password encoder and I'll make it at the rate auto word because anyhow password encoder I'm creating there and I'll also make it private. There you go. So the next thing I'll be doing, I got the password encoder object. I can copy this object right here and maybe in line number 36, maybe before that, before saving only, I want to encrypt the password. Maybe to encrypt the password, I can do what? Uh, sign of DTO dot get password. Whatever the password we have, let's encrypt it. And if you want to encrypt it, you can put this thing inside the password encoder. So we can write password encoder dot encode. We have a method called encode inside the password encoder. Maybe I told you yesterday, I, I will be giving you a deep dive, but you can see this password encoder does have three methods. One is called encode method. This is this is to encode your password, okay? Uh, maybe to bcrypt or to some kind of, I mean, we can use any kind of algorithm to encode your password to some different format. The next one matches. This is, this is going to help you to match a row password with an encoded password. And there is another one called upgrade encoding. This is just to, uh, this is an extra layer of security. Imagine you are encoding your password, right? Let's say I'm I'm having Vinita one, two, three. After encoding, it'll create a long value, a string value just like this. Imagine just like uh, whatever I have in the database. Imagine like something like this, it'll create, okay? Once it'll create something just like this, if you want to give some extra security, I mean, this is, this is kind of impossible for the hacker to, you know, bring it back to the original condition. But if you want to make it impossible, then you can give an extra layer of security by calling this method of grid encoding. Now this will do what? Over the encoded password, you can see encoded password, whatever the encoded password will be getting from here, that password will be encoded again. Okay, so two times encoding will happen and encoding over encoding. So you will get some extra layer of security. But one thing is that if you'll be doing multiple encoding, obviously that will make your system slow. Okay, also make sure about that. So right now we don't care for anything else. We need this encode method to encode the password. So now let me close this password encoder. Let me go to my controller. I'm inside my controller right now. I can go back to post mapping process sign off. Here right now inside the encode method, I will cut this one. This is basically my password and I'll paste it right here. Now this one is going to encode my password. So let me see whether it is encoding my password or not. So right now what I can do, I can basically once encoding has been done here, I will set the encoding value again. So I'll do sign of DTO uh, dot set password. Okay. And this password is going to be what? Whatever is going to be the encoded value. Maybe I can get the encoding encoded value right here. I can do control one. It will get me a string. So string, let's say encoded password okay and maybe i can just set the encoded password right now now here inside this dto the password will be encoded right now can i print it after encoding if i'll be printing it so i'll say before encoding okay and same thing i'll print again command c maybe i'll print the data again after encoding okay uh, so we'll see that uh, is there any changes or not. So let Plus, me. Yes. Maybe you will get the same password because we are using exactly. Uh, no Ex op and exactly. Exactly. I just want to show you that. So we'll be getting the same password. Yeah. But why? Let's let's see that again. So right now, if I'll be doing Vinita and Vinita one two one two three, enter. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's a login page, right? I want to go to the sign up page. Maybe I can go to sign up page. I can try for a new password. Let's say, uh, let's say, you know, Vinita and Vinita one two three sign up. Okay. Now let's go there and let's check. Now see the password before is whatever we had Vinita and Vinita one two three. After the password also, we are having the same data, right? So why the encoding does not happen? Because as you guys know, we are using no password encoder right now. This password encoder here that we have defined inside our controller, you can see it's our login controller. Here the password encoder object, 
whatever we have created there in the bins bins.xml this is a no password encoder and inside the no password encoder if we'll go into that and if you are going to see the see the encode method they are not doing anything once you pass the row password they are just converting it to two string okay they are not at all encoding your password but we want we don't want to convert it to two string right if we'll be converting it to two string you'll be seeing the plain password but i don't want to do that maybe i can use a big crypt password encoder instead of this one so let me try that let me use big crypt password encoder uh, maybe i can create a new big crypt password encoder object so now big crypt password encoder is going to be the one that i'll be using now i'll do what maybe here i can go for some new user let me you go for vinita vinita 123 sign up okay now i move to the login page now here let's see what is going to happen is there any magic happened so if i'll go to down where i am printing it and there you go before the password was looking something just like this now after that we have used a big crypt algorithm to convert our password vinita123 to this one remember i was using the big crypt calculator yesterday to generate the password right now we don't have to do it right now we uh, we have written our own logic to generate the big crypt password and that's what we are doing by simply by using the encode method right so maybe i can go back to the login controller and here i'm just using password encode encoder dot encode method right now this dto that we have we have the password and the username everything is there now we can just do in short okay so now to in short this value what we need to do where we will be inserting we will be inserting this one to our database where is our database now here inside the users uh, table will be inserting our data so here maybe moyur data and dilip data i have just changed it yesterday just to make you understand maybe i'll be reverted back to the big crypt okay but right now new data will be coming here let's say vinita data will be coming here vinita and her date password will be coming here and obviously uh we will not be asking the user like you know you are enabled user or you are you are not we will not be asking that to user right we'll we we'll can simply hard code this value to one okay so to do that we will be writing a logic to save the save the object that we have right here right now the object that we have right now here is the sign of dto object this object i'll be saving to the database now let's forget about hibernate uh i will not be using hibernate maybe we need to do some kind of configuration right now and i know i have not told you about that anyhow we will be doing things in hibernate later let's use simple jdbc now tell me if i will be using jdbc then how can i save this data to data to the database what kind of logic we will be writing what kind of things we will be doing and i will be asking this question to okay whom i'm going to ask this question okay sonali can you help me to do that what we need to do right now basically we need to save the data right so if we need to save the data uh, what are the things you are remembering from the jdbc lecture if you remember anything what yes. we will be doing mm -hmm. uh, we will need a down layer there and in down layer uh, we will uh, we will be having methods uh, jdbc yes. methods will be there like exactly. update update is there update. and uh, perfect yeah just tell me one thing that update method that we will be calling sonali will be calling on jdbc api what is that class we will be needing jdbc template perfect perfect good job yeah so we will be we will be using three things right as she said we will be using three things the first thing is that we will be creating a dao layer okay maybe uh, dao layer will be creating a interface maybe a sign of dao then we'll be using a sign of dao impl okay and then here in the sign of dao impl we can use any anything to save the data literally hibernate you know my betis jdbc spring jdbc whatever mongo whatever you want to use but here let's do some simple implementation right now maybe after that once we learn hibernate we'll come back and change this particular layer only okay and here we'll be using as she said jdbc template okay and jdbc template 
to insert a, a row into the database, we'll be using the update method of JDBC template. Okay, so I think you guys know about this. So I will be going to here and I'll be creating a new package. So let me go ahead and let me create a new pack. Let me create a new. Uh, okay, I can create a new interface. Right click new interface and I'll be putting that inside a package called com dot selenium express dot dao and uh, maybe I can write sign up dao that will make more sense sign up dao and the interface name is going to be let's say uh, sign up dao okay let me say dao only sorry I thought this is the class name okay dao sign up dao maybe I can make it small okay now let me do finish now it will create me a sign up dao and right here we'll be creating one method. What we'll be doing right now, we'll be saving some data. But let me do save user, okay? User data I'll be uh, saving. Now, what is that object that I'll be saving here? Now go to the, uh, go to the controller. Where is your controller? Login controller. Now this is the object I'll be saving. What kind of type we have? Sign up DTO type we have, right? So we'll be saving a sign up DTO type object. So now I'll be going to the DAO. Here I'll be saying that, hey, I will I want to save this sign of DTO object. So sign of DTO, sign of DTO. And obviously don't return me anything. Just save my object. That's it. Okay. So now I got an interface and I got a method called save user. I'll be taking the sign of DTO object and I'll be saving that. Now let me create a implementation class. So go to new class and let me make it uh, sign of uh, sign of DAO IMPL and maybe I can add an interface right here. What is the, what, whatever I've created, sign up DAO, and I'll do finish, okay? Now sign up, sign up DAO IMPL class is ready. It's implements to sign up DAO, and also overridden the save user method. Now here as, um, you know, Sonali was discussing right now, we will be creating the JDBC template object. So I'll say JDBC template, JDBC template, okay? And maybe, uh, template okay we'll be creating this let me make it private and uh, this is a which kind of layer DO layer on top of DO layer uh, what kind of annotation we will be using component or repository yeah repository. Repository. So we'll, yeah so let me go with repository annotation and this is just like a component annotation as I said uh, uh, so just to mark this as a DO layer we're using repository okay and if you hover over here you can understand that repository is also having a component annotation. Okay, so it's just like a component. So now JDBC template we will be having. Now using this JDBC template, now we'll be doing JDBC template, JDBC template, this variable dot update method we'll be using. Why we'll be using the update method? Because we'll be running an SQL. Okay, which kind of SQL will be running? We will be running a DDL or DML. In short, is a DDL for you? DML, DML, right? Yeah, manipulation language. So we'll be running a DML query. So I'll, I'll be writing string SQL is equal to. Uh, now I need to insert the data. Insert the data to which table? Let me go to go there. Users table. What kind of columns I have? Username. I am getting the data of username. User is giving me password. It is also we got enabled. We'll hard code it. Okay. And as Felix was asking me. Uh, if we want, can we have some more data here like email, uh, gender, age, things like that? Of course we can, but we will be doing that later. Okay, now let's follow their approach only. Let's insert some data to this table. So now I can go here. I can say insert, then uh, insert into, then uh, table name is users. Okay, then values. The value is going to see, um, you know, see guys, you know, if I'll have any type or something, just hour me. So values is going to be, there are three value, username, password, and enabled. So now this SQL we want to run. So let me copy this SQL and this SQL we have to paste here. So we will be running this SQL. And what will be this argument? The first argument is going to be what? Sign of DTO dot username, okay? Because the first column represents username, if you remember. The first one is going to be username. Next one is going to be password. Next one is going to be enable. Let me come back and let me do here username, then sign up DTO dot password. 
get password. And remember that we have already converted the password to encrypted form. So we'll be getting an encrypted password because this DTO is right now having the encrypted password. We have changed the password that the user is entering. The next one is enabled. Right now, let me hard code it to one. Okay, now looks good. Now our update method is ready. So now the user will be saved. And also one more thing, when there is a user, yeah, yeah, the list. We need to auto wire uh, JDBC template here. Exactly. Right? Yes, we need to auto wire the JDBC template. And also remember that we have not created any JDBC template pin, right? But I want to tell one more thing here. See here, one thing is that this query is only going to insert a statement to the user table, right? To here only, it will be inserting a statement. But if you guys remember, if we have uh, where is our entity? Okay, this is this is the one we have created yesterday. This user table we are inserting, but also this table got some authorities. So right now, whoever is uh, data is inserting, we also need to insert his authorities right here inside the authorities table. So if I'll go to the authorities table, so here we have two things. What is that? Username and authority, right? So right now. Authority less hard code for everyone. The authority is going to be user. Okay. If someone is admin, then the DBA will come and make him an admin. Okay. So right now, as we are not using Hibernate, I, I don't want to do complicated things right now. Let's simply do one thing. Let me copy this JDBC template and let me do an, another update here. Maybe we can run another SQL. Let me copy this SQL. Paste this SQL right now. I'll say SQL 2, and here I'll be inserting to authorities table. Authorities, okay, and the values are going to be how many columns here in the authorities table? Two columns, username and authority. Okay, username, anyhow, that, that uh, we will be getting from the DTO, right? So username, anyhow, we'll be getting from here, right? Sign up DTO. Here also, we are using username right here. To the users table, also, we are inserting username sign up dot get username same thing we can also get from here the second thing is uh, what kind of user he is for everyone i'll make him a user only okay so this data i'm hard coding sorry here i don't need to hard code here i can give question mark and question mark and um, why it is giving me problem there you go question mark question mark and here i'll do what sign up dto dot get username and the second uh, column is going to be user. So I'll be hard coding it. Let's say user. OK, so I'm just hard coding the role here. OK, for let's say Vinita is coming. Now this username is going to be Vinita and she got a user role. Let's say Repti is coming here. So this is going to be Repti and the role will be user here. OK, so for every user, I'm hard coding the data. So now this save user is making sense or it does not making sense. Just let me know. Just see the code, what I have done, think why I'm doing it, and then uh, just ask me. Here basically, we I'm just hard coding the things. I'm just simply you know hard coding the things and pushing something through the database. That's it. So is it making sense? This this piece of code right now is not is bad coding. Okay. In Hibernate, we are going to establish the one-to-many relationship and we'll be doing it. Right now, I'm not establishing any relationship. I'm simply pushing the data because I want to focus more on security and make you understand the things. That's it. Okay, is making sense right now or not? I'm just yes. expecting. Yes, sir. Yes. I, I'm not yeah. sure because I could not understand yesterday class. Have you added uh, like in POM that dependency? Yes, I have added the dependency, JDBC dependency, and the MySQL driver is My already added. Yes, it's already added. Oh no, yeah, good, good, good catch. Yeah, uh, so this is if it is done. Now the save user is done. Now one more thing we have to do. This uh, DAO IMPL, obviously we got the repository, so object will be created for this and will be maintained inside the application context. So in the controller, we'll be having a DAO call. So oh, where is my controller? Here we go. I mean, login controller. So right now, here I'll be doing a DB call. Save the DTO, uh, you know, to DB call. Okay. Now to do the DB call, obviously we need the DAO reference. Maybe we can create one more private. 
what is that uh, sign up sign up what is that sign up dao impl but why don't i have sign up dao sign up dao so why don't i have the dao dao i have saved it or not or i have given it i i have done some spelling mistake okay sign so, uh, there you go typo sign up okay sign up dao sign up uh, dao and basically i'll make it auto word and this sign up dao right now i'll be doing it with by using this i'll be doing a db call inside my controller handler method right processing process sign up here once we converted our password once we encrypted our password then this particular dto will be saving so i'll be doing sign up dao dot save user and this uh, dto okay sign up dto i'm passing here now if i'll do control s if i'll click on save user if i'll go to the open implementation you can it will be going to your dao class and here only we are saving the user so here we are paging the username password everything and we will be pushing it to users table and authority table one last thing is pending right now as dilip was saying this jdbc template is not at all not already created okay this will throw us null pointer exception because we have to create the jdbc i mean jdbc template object now i'll ask someone uh, who has completed uh, this thing earlier maybe who forgot already what these things because one second check let me open that particular file security config this here only will be creating one more one more bean for jdbc template now who is going to help me to create a jdbc template mayur you can try now see here we have data source already right we just need to create the jdbc template bean so what we need to do mayur is there in the call okay someone else can try uh, yes, I, uh, in JDBC template create object, I will pass that data uh, source. Exactly. So, okay. So public JDBC template. JDBC template is going to be my bean name. And uh, whenever we'll be creating the JDBC template, it will be needing a data source, right? So we'll be returning a JDBC template object. So I'll be creating an instance of JDBC template. JDBC template. JDBC template is equal to new jdbc template okay and i'll still i'll say jdbc template dot set data source i can do set data source here and i can set the data source and also if you want if you remember this jdbc template got a constructor another constructor to control space data source which, which is going to take a data source now this data source we are already creating here so i can directly call this data source right here okay now I think we are done. One last thing. I want Spring to call this okay. particular method. Return. Yeah, one sec, one sec, one sec. Make okay. it a bin. Make it a bin. Yeah, I, I'll make it a bin. Felix, one sec, one sec. I'll do that one. I'll do that. JDBC template and I'll make it a bin. Okay, there I go. So now I feel that everything is okay. We got a JDBC template bin and we got a data source bin. If you are working on Hibernate instead of JDBC template, we would have created Session Factory. Okay. And if you are working in Spring Boot, instead of Session Factory, instead of JDBC template, we would have created Entity Manager or we would have created Crowd Repository or JPA Repository instance. Right. So, anyhow, we are making it simple right now. Uh, looks like everything is ready. Now, let's go there and let's try it and let's see whether we are getting an issue. So sign up here, uh, sign up here. I'll do refresh, and uh, here I will do. I'll do. I'll just try to sign up with Vinita right now. I'll do Vinita, and Vinita one two three, and sign up. Okay, there there are some server error. Now bad SQL grammar exception. Now can you see the exception? Why we are getting it? So it's saying insert into values three parameter no value specified for parameter three okay so let's see where we are having the problem maybe we can go here so i can go to my jdbc dao layer and dao impl i can go to i can go to there okay so now uh, three parameter for this so username we are passing password we are passing and this one also we are passing right so this is correct 
and the second one there are two parameters looks like we are doing correct thing only right okay okay so, accepting yeah. one or what no, no 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 see this one this is sql2 right sql2. i have copy pasted here this should be sql2 only because we will be updating that to authorities right here we are having two parameters if you are doing a update so obviously it's not working right also we have not done some uh, we have also not uh, you know done the transaction management so i feel that already the data is inserted can i do select okay not yet i have i've tried with vinita okay is any house reported back or maybe what about users table I mean in authority it is not inserted okay okay so i okay i wanted to check users table only sorry yeah this is already inserted that's what i was thinking okay we have not added the transactional annotation so obviously the data will be inserted so we would have been, we would have used uh, transactional in some cases if we'll be using spring boot transactional will be automatically taken care maybe if you are using spring data or something but right now we have to manually add the transaction and see it's a bad scenario right it's a completely bad scenario the authority is data did not get inserted but here data got inserted right now if i'll be trying with vinita user it will be throwing me issue maybe i can delete this row right now i'll do apply apply close let me go there right now again go back to there let me do control s now this time it will work let me go back let me do refresh vinita and i'll say vinita 1 2 3 sign up there you go so move to the login page let's go here refresh i got vinita data encoded password and enabled is 1 now i'll go to authorities look for that and i got vinita and the role she got is user because i have hard coded the data right here um right here right so hopefully it's making sense right now let me try to do a login with vinita maybe i can try with vinita and vinita 1 2 3 login and there you go i'm logged in can i go to hello world okay i'm able to go there i can do log out i have logged out maybe i can try with a new user let me try with abhishek and maybe i can give abhi 1 2 3 login okay first i have to do sign up right because he is not a well i mean that user is not there so maybe i can go to sign up now i am inside the sign up form so now let's try that abhishek and uh, abhi 1 2 3 sign up he signed up, he has signed up. right now move to the login page because we are redirecting now let me try with try to log in let's say abhishek and abhi 1 2 3 3 login and he is logged in now if i'll go for hello world and the page is really visible and if i'll do log out he is logged out and if i'll go there in the database if i'll try to see here now abhishek is inserted now if i'll go to the user uh, also abhishek should be there Hey, where is Abhishek? Okay, there you go. Okay, we have not done anything special today. It's very very simple. If you know Spring MBC, this is very very simple. Okay, so is it making sense or is kind of complicated for you guys? I just want to hear from everyone. If there is any problem, just tell me. I'll just talk to you maybe tomorrow for 20 25 minutes and I'll make this clear before you move forward. I just want to know that. is it clear or not let's start oh, abhishek is it clear uh yes abhilas i understood today okay anu yes okay dilip making sense yes. i think you should be understanding because you are following the jdbc series isn't it yeah yeah okay so felix making sense yeah yeah felix yes yes you can ask me questions yeah i just wanted to ask you uh huh Why are we not having an error? Because in our DTO, I saw you you added uh, an ID, yeah, and we are not using ID at all. ID at all? Uh, where, okay, okay, okay. That ID I am not using. Basically, uh, you can separately delete that. Uh, Felix, good catch. Yep. <laughs> okay, I I should not have created that uh, ID there. One sec, one sec. Where is my DTO? Yep. you can basically delete uh, comment this id 
uh, Felix. Right now we are not using it. Okay. Okay. Apart from that, Felix, you are good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, Dilip, I will not ask you. I know you understand this. You are following the JDBC series. <laughs> and Karthik, don't say me no. <laughs> Karthik is clear, right? You should yeah, just yeah. leave. <laughs> okay, anyhow. Mayur, you should be understanding. You understood? Yeah, I understood, but I have some doubt. Okay, ask me. Yeah, so can you please open that... Uh where you have encoded the password okay login controller i have encoded the password here client yeah, number suppose yeah suppose i am your client mm -hmm. and uh, at line number 39 if you are saving mm -hmm. my password somewhere else mm -hmm. then uh, you can uh, uh, you can see it right at that time yeah. what so basically you are saying here the password is coming as raw password. I can see the password, right? Yeah, so yeah. What for, for that kind of scenario, we'll be taking care uh, Mayur whenever we'll be doing that on Spring Boot. Basically what we can do right now also, you can mm -hmm. go to the sign up page. Right now when the user is giving the password, here only mm -hmm. make it encrypted. Okay. okay, and send the encrypted password from here. From, from your JSP only encrypt it and that password only you send it through uh, through uh, I mean just like that the normal way it will be it will be sent now mm -hmm. you will be catching that password here and you don't have to encode the password here right now okay you okay. can direct how to encrypt at front end front end we can encrypt the no, same thing we can do here same method we can big big crypt uh, uh, what is that big crypt encryptor same big crypt encryptor we can use that here we can call the Java function here also Mayur. okay okay yeah, yeah we will it's be doing that. well yeah it's a JSP yeah but in time leap also we can do that in angular also we can do the same thing uh, anyhow you know the thing is that we can do that in the front end if you want to make some extra security and you do not want that to cast there okay maybe in the back end before that only before back before it goes to back end from the front end only we can hash it okay yeah. okay cool or else we can make it as a character array Oh, so that we can yes, see yes. the whole Carary is basically used for password storing only. Yeah, we can we can take the data type instead of string. I can say it carary. That's all. That's a good practice. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sonali, you got it. Uh, Repti, you should be getting it, isn't it? You are following also that JDBC series. Yes, okay. Okay. Yes, you are good. Yes, sir. Okay. Vinita, don't say me no. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I know you should be good, but next time maybe we can do it and have do it on Hibernate. And I know that you guys are familiar with Hibernate. You have done so many times, right? But JDBC also, don't forget it and you know don't ignore this one. Lot of times Spring Boot project they are using JDBC named parameter JDBC template. JDBC template named parameter JDBC template I have not covered, and I am thinking to combine both of the batches and I'll give you the uh, you know KT on named parameter JDBC template. We are just using simple JDBC template right now. Sonali, you are good? Yes, Abhilash, I'm good. Perfect. That's it. Then we will talk tomorrow. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching it. And in the next episode, as I said, we'll be talking about the role-based authorization, which is going to be pretty much exciting. Imagine in your, in your application, you have five different kinds of user. For an example, customers, subscribers, users, admin, how you will be restrict uh, the people with some kind of role uh, to access your resources. For an example, the admin can access all the pages. The user can access only two pages. The customer can access four pages, okay? So how to uh, build this kind of stuff with Spring Security? That's what we'll learn in the next episode, which is again going to be pretty much exciting. I hope you guys are excited. See you then. Bye-bye. Take care and happy coding. See you soon.